It's Ducati time. Sorry about the mess in here, but uh, getting ready to take the side cover off for the stator to access the uh, starter clutch. I just did a starter in it, worked fine for five days, and started messing up again. Uh, if I didn't have stuff undone, I'd show you what it's doing. I, I have a I have a video before this one you can hear what it's doing um, it's one of the more extreme cases I've seen but so the process is pretty straightforward um, I would begin with draining the coolant draining the oil you can drain your coolant to a port right here it's a six mil or five millimeter allen and uh, so here's some of the tools that you're going to need to do whole process here I got a five millimeter and a three millimeter Allen something to turn them with you got your 14 millimeter for the drain plug if you choose to drain the oil uh, this bike's got 8700 miles I figure I'm just doing the 9000 oil change while I'm here I already did the spark plugs I had it all torn down get to the tank and everything had people saying they wish I would have made a video of doing that. Hopefully, I don't have to do it again till uh, 19 000, or 18,000 miles. But uh, it's straightforward. Um, I didn't have a manual when I tore it down, but I accessed one to get all the torque specs when I put everything back together. So I've got an eight millimeter, or I know the thing to turn turn your turn your uh, Allen or Allen wrenches with. Need a six millimeter. Now that's for your shifter and your secondary drain plug with the magnet on it. Uh, flathead, access your uh, coolant lines, whatnot, price up moth. Uh, another Allen wrench set, got a light so I can see what's going on. Now this is to remove the cover. You can choose to buy the tool or make the tool. I ended up making the tool, pretty rudimentary, but it works just fine. Got your two bolts going there, something to turn them with. And you're gonna need black silicone. So, show you how and where to drain the oil here real quick. All right, well, for simplicity of the video, I already changed the filter. Filter number KN153. And your drain plugs, right here, you got one on the side, one on the bottom. One on the side is a 14 millimeter. Break that one loose. One on the bottom is a six millimeter. Break that one loose. Let it all drain out. Your filter, depending on what filter you have, uh, they have a hex on the bottom. Use a 17 millimeter. Break it loose. Let it drain out completely. Put the new one on. I like to pre-fill them. I'm not going to fill the crankcase yet because I have to tear it apart, obviously. But hand tight, plus three quarters of a turn. Your instructions are right on there. And for oil refill, they recommend the Shell Advance 4T 1050 or 1550. It's in the manual. Uh, this 4T was on sale. I'm cheap, so I bought the cheap stuff. Uh, not really cheap, 10 bucks a quart. But uh, this is still accceptable through the manual for the temps I'm going to be riding at. By four quarts, it takes like three and a half fill your oil there and it pretty much sums up your oil change if you ever done one before it's really straightforward torque specs are in the manual but i will be posting down in the bottom all right for simplicity of the video i have removed the majority of the fastening software on here so to begin you drain your coolant as stated before through this drain plug now to refill, you're going to have to remove the right side fairing, which is screw here, screw here with a large tin nut on the back side. Probably have to use a crescent wrench because I had a normal wrench and it was a little bit too thick. And inside here, there is one bolt, two bolt, three bolt. That'll loosen up your fairing. 
you take it, bring it out, pull it back, and lift it up. Simple as that. You gotta take the seat off, which gives you access to the radiator cap to fill it or relieve pressure when you go to drain it so it's not chug a lugging, making a mess everywhere. Your drain plug over here, five millimeter Allen, if I remember correctly. Yeah, five millimeter Allen, let it all drain out. And you're gonna take your flathead screwdriver, this hose, that hose, and that hose. Now, I've heard some people say they take this hose completely off. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna take it off and hold it out of the way. I do remove these completely. Simple enough, take it off. Take it off. That's pretty much all you gotta do for the cooling system on it. I tighten that back up till I go to refill it and torque it. Uh, so, for beginners, I like to take all of the mounting screws off I can get to right now. There's one, one or two behind this cover. And you also have to take this wiring hole down here off. Um, so those are five millimeter Allens again. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I can see, and I believe there's two behind the cover, so that makes thirteen total. And uh, to get the cover off, you're gonna have to take your shifter off. Is a six millimeter Allen. Now that's it's Loctited, usually pretty tight to get off. I already took it off, so there's that. Fold it up out of the way to get to this. This is a five millimeter Allen, and it's been Loctited, usually pretty tight to get off. Now I'm probably going to adjust my position. But normally you'd want to either scribe or use a permanent marker to mark the position. And then you pull it off. Sometimes they're pretty difficult to get off. you got to get a flathead behind it or something to uh, kind of give you some leverage. So after you remove that, you got your kickstand wire in here, which is routed through these here. I already got the bolts out of that, so wiggle it out. And then your plug-ins right here, you can slide it off by pulling it forward. Pop your connector off. Take that, get it out of the way there. And then that gives you access to that bottom bolt to get your, your sprocket cover off. Now those are four millimeter Allens. Throw your Allen wrench on there. There's there's four of them total. I've already got three of them removed, as you can see. So you take your tool of choice. I use quarter inch bit make life easier on a ratchet here. Break it loose. Now the majority of these bolts got a lot tight on them, so they come out hard pretty much all the way or until the uh, lock tight comes off there. Personally, when I'm working on small engines like this, I don't like using electric tools. You can if you want, to your own discretion. I don't have very much luck using using it with small bolts like this. So, there you get that off. Your cover should come right off. Once you get the last bolt off, take your bolt out. I use, got some Matco collapsible bolt containers here. Now, if, if you're not very good at figuring out where the bolts go, you can look through the manual, or you can set them up and back in there. That's that's pretty much up to you. Now there is this little alignment doll, and it's got an O-ring on it. O-ring on there. You will have some oil come out, so make sure you have a drain pan to catch all of that. I kind of made a mess with the coolant, but. Um, You'll have to make sure that hole's clean when you go to RTV everything back together. Throw that by your parts, and you can see you got a bolt there and a bolt there to remove the cover. Now those are 
five millimeter. You'll throw that on your tool and remove them. All right, got those two bolts removed there. Again, to recap, there's 13 total around it. Um, and for the sake of the video, I went ahead and removed that hose going to the radiator. Kind of see in there a little bit better. Uh, so after you get all them bolts out, you're going to go ahead and remove this cover here to access. I've already loosened them also, 4 millimeter Allen. And take them out. have some oil come out depending on which way your bike's leaning you take the cover off there it gives you access inside there you do need a special puller to remove it since it's all been siliconed on there now unfortunately the wiring for the stator which the stator's mounted on the cover you'll see once it's part the plug is all the way up in there so I'm just gonna figure out something to prop it on set it over here so it doesn't stretch the wire or break nothing but I'll get this polar set up and get back at you alrighty I got my polar set up here uh, got the small bolts in there I like to put them snug you ain't gotta crank them down all your pulling action comes from your larger bolt um, I believe they're M8 bolts I just got a bolt bent up pull pull junk out of whenever I need a miscellaneous bolt. Uh, I also have got a big rammer, well a rubber rammer, kind of a big rubber rammer, but help break break stuff loose when you get tension on it. That silicone's got a lot of holding power, so I go quarter turn or so, just started to pop loose, leave the tension on it, there are a couple cracks there. Now, I've heard of people cracking the cover or cracking the case, something along those lines. They say just be careful with it. It's got to come straight off because there's a shaft for your water pump. There's, I believe there's one other shaft in there that has to line up just perfect. But once she starts coming off, get some pressure on it. Oh, yeah. She's coming. She's coming. Almost there. Another crack or two here. I got a GoPro for a, a mount. Yeah, there she went. But I'm having trouble getting the uh, high quality HVAC videos uploaded or something like that. I don't know. I ain't super tech savvy. I'm wrench savvy, but I ain't tech savvy. So, looks like we got enough there. Yeah, it's still on there somewhere. There it is. This cover's got to come off just right. Take my tension off that so I can get get a tug on it yeah she's loose enough now there is magnet force from your stator on there Let's see that. Hold, it on right there. pull the cover straight off you got your shifter shaft down there too you'll reach a point where the magnet stops right there so i'll set this up on my box here and there's the inside of the engine Got your stator basket, your stator generator. There's your water pump shaft I was talking about. And uh, it's also got like an idler there, along with your shifter shaft. Now, me, I already replaced the starter, like I stated before. If you were just doing the starter, there's your two bolts right there and right there that you'd remove in order to slide the starter out. There's also a bolt there. And un momento. Bolt on the back side, and then you got your wiring. Slides out, slides in, new gasket, lock tight on the bolts, torque to spec. If you're doing a starter, I'll I'll put the torque specs in the bottom. Uh, trying to make this video short. It's kind of a long process. 
but so I'll get everything set up to uh, I have to get to the uh, starter clutch so we'll see how that goes I didn't mention before the starter clutch sits behind here you got an idler here well idler intermediate gear however you want to say it I'm not quite sure what the manual states but so the nut has to come off and you're gonna have to use a polar of some sort some people say they can just slide it right off I don't know it's got a pretty hefty torque spec on that nut so we'll see how it rolls I'll uh, update once I get everything apart okay I got the nut off Fortunately, I didn't have a deep well metric big enough, but a inch and three sixteenths fits pretty tight. I just use the impact taker off. Uh, I don't have a gear holder at the moment. Should be having one coming same time as my clutch. So you take the nut off there, and I got lucky because it ended up sliding right off for me. Get it to do it again. Okay. Better slide right off there. Now your starter clutch, right on the back side here, turn it the one way, can't turn it the other way. Now you got a idler bearing there, washer behind there. You got your intermediate shaft, whatnot. I like to look at all the gears, make sure they're all good, no missing teeth, scoring, anything like that. You take your shaft off here. I do see some wear on the sleeve part of it but I'm gonna all I got coming is the sprag clutch so gonna do that should be okay it's an updated updated clutch so it's gonna take that extra little shiny spot there and it's all gonna be contact part not just the smaller part but to remove the clutch take it back right around here we got bolts all through here those are eight millimeter but they're going to be difficult to get on there because it's magnetized. But I'll get them off so you the clutch it. Well, 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 what do we have here? Pretty flat spotted there. Damaged pile, good pile. That's not too good if you ask me. So all them rollers sit in there, it fell apart when I took it apart. The spring goes around all the rollers. Tell the spring even got damaged here. Let's see if it'll focus here. Probably not. See the spring damage? Alright. So we took the bolts out of the inside there. And your clutch sits on the back side. Now this plate here that's been separated. It that's what locks it in and then it, grabs onto that ring and the gear ring over there now I didn't take it apart like I should have I put the screwdriver behind it popped it out That's probably why it fell apart but to remove this it wasn't budging for me so what I did is I started two bolts in the back side here Man, it's weird to see through the camera work on stuff. Set it down and tapped it in the middle with the rubber mallet. And it slowly started working out for me. Now I'm about bottomed out with the bolts I got here. Hit the, hit the top of this and the top of the bolts. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the trusty toolbox. Leg foot. Pooch was dead. It's hot out. It's like 92 degrees is on the clock. Hopefully, I can pop that out. All right. Well, the lady foot did the trick, getting that out of there. So you can see the wear a little bit more in there. Realistically, I should replace this. If I had a Ducati dealer closer, I probably would. But the nearest one's 250 miles away. Actually, I had to call and order one, order a clutch from them because internet has it, but it's coming from Europe. So, hoping it does the trick. Hopefully. But 
I'm still waiting on the part should be coming in anytime now but for now I'll post wrap up this video it's been kind of lengthy so I'll uh, update reinstallation the only other thing you got to do on here you got to clean off all the gasket material got to be nice and clean I just use a normal scraper to do all that with and then it's ready for installation once that's torqued